Good morning, and welcome to the City of Cleveland Black History Month program. I'm Shelly Shockley, co-chair of the Black History Month Committee, and I welcome you on behalf of Mayor Frank G. Jackson and Grady L. Stevenson, Executive Director of the City's Community Relations Board. Today is our fifth installment of a virtual Black History celebration, focusing on strengthening Black families with the quest for equity and equality. In the last year, our families have faced many challenges, and one of the most difficult was how to educate our children in the midst of a global pandemic. Today, we will speak with a Cleveland Metropolitan School District educator who has faced this hurdle head on. His hard work and that of other educators will help to strengthen our families and ultimately our communities. It is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Tony Tell, a member of our committee who will lead our discussion today. Good morning, Tony, and I will turn it over to you. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, Shelley. Good morning, Dr. Buddy. Nice to meet you finally. Um, great. Um, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Again, my name is Tony Pell, and I am the Grant Administrator and Compliance Officer for the Community Relations Board of the City of Cleveland. Uh, today, again, our theme is Strengthening Black Families Through the Quest for Equity and Equality. Um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we've all had to develop ways to function and, and thrive within, new, uh, within a new normal, and that new normal has uh, provided us with additional challenges and families and challenges for families already struggling with life demand. I think we can all agree that the pandemic has presented an enormous disruption in education. And in this past year, we've seen data that shows a widening learning gap um, during the pandemic that has disproportionately affected the socioeconomically disadvantaged, especially those students of color, as well as those students already struggling. So it questions many traditions and rules and structures that have organized the work of schools in the past. Um, and today I'd like to discuss with Dr. Buddy how his amazing group at Wade Park Elementary has struggled with those and have overcome those challenges of educating our, our students, especially those students of color um, during the pandemic. Um, so Dr. Buddy, thank you again for joining us. Um, a few questions uh, that I had, um, and Shelly, you can jump in if, if you want to um, uh, help out. Um, do you think that the pandemic has exacerbated those inequities in education? And does that now give us the opportunity to fix some of the pre existing inequities that we were unable or, in some cases, unwilling to improve? So thank you so much for the question. Um, just definitely want to say, you know, thank you, um, Mayor Jackson. Thank you to the committee. Thank you, Shelley. Um, thank you for all, you know all of your hard work um, and support um, here at Wade Park. Um, definitely, when we went into you know the governor shut us down um, last March, um, I would dare I would dare to say over seventy percent of our families did not have a device. Um, or internet access at their home. So we immediately, you know, went to work, you know, we reached out to different community partners um, to really try to get, you know, to really level the playing field and really look to, you know, close that gap. Um, just because, you know, there were, you know, other schools and, you know, other districts that were already one-to-one, -one, um, which they were able to make a seamless transition to virtual. But, you know, a lot of our families, I would dare say, once again, over 70% did not have internet at their home and or even a device to log their child into class. Um, so definitely, you know, through this pandemic, you know, now, you know, CMSD is now a one-to-one -one district. You know, every family that needs internet access is able to get it, um, to get either a hotspot device or is able, um, through Digital Clee, is able to get, you know, high-speed internet installed in their home for free. Um, through the life of the child state in CMSD. So that definitely has been able to really level the playing field, you know, provide, you know, that, you know, internet capability for any family that needs it um, and really provide a lot of different resources to the families that we did not have, you know, prior to this pandemic. 
That's wonderful. Um, I know that there are um, families, I, I have one child and she's an adult at this point, but there are so many families that have multiple children right. um, that have challenges in learning, such as finding quiet, place, uh, quiet places to learn and, um, and that inadequate um, service, uh, internet service. What, um, what other support can you give to those students that are having um, difficulty transitioning to this type of self-directed learning? So the district has done a, you know, a really you know, good job of working with you know, the Cleveland Foundation through the Say Yes office to provide learning pods throughout the, throughout the city. So, you know, parents that, you know, either have to work during the day or they have, as you mentioned, multiple students where, you know, finding a quiet space in a home might be a challenge. You know, parents are able to drop their child off to these different learning pods during the school day where they are able to get additional assistance and support with completing their academic activities. Um, it also, like I said, provides just a space for them. And, you know, furthermore, you know, we do have scholars that, you know, we had here, like for instance at Wade Park, that would stay after school for after school tutoring or, or come before school for before school tutoring just because they needed that additional assistance and support. So the learning pods has, a, you know, not a perfect fix, but it has assisted us with providing that additional support and the families and the scholars with getting additional help and assistance in addition to the quiet learning space. You know, in addition, we've partnered with, um, you know, for instance, University Circle or UNIDOP with Ms. Honeybell Bay um, to provide, you know, different enrichment um, opportunities for scholars after school on the weekends where students are able to stay engaged. Um, a big thing that we've looked at, you know, throughout this whole pandemic has been really the social emotional learning of students and really students just really being isolated. So we've really worked thoughtfully, you know, with our with our partners, um, such as University Circle and UNIDOP and, you know, Greater, Greater Cleveland Neighborhood Association to provide additional enrichment opportunities for students and families to really keep them engaged during this time. That's wonderful. I know that uh, we've just interviewed Honey Bell Bay. Yeah. Uh, she was one of our recipients uh, this week. So it's great that you're working with her and utilizing a lot of the resources you have in the city. Um, I know that um, as an adult, struggling with um, learning from home or distance learning provides a, a huge frustration and anxiety. What would you suggest for families to do or what, what has, has Wade Park Elementary done with your students to alleviate those, um, those that anxiety that, that students have, that families have, how can they function and still progress as students? So we're, we're really looking at it as a multi-tier support of systems. So um, we partner with Murdis Taylor. Um, that is our you know, mental health agency that we have here in the building. Uh, we have great therapists, um, their support personnel, um, you know, they've even, they've increased their level of support for families during this time. So, you know, anytime a teacher, you know, sees that the student's having some challenges or just needs someone to speak to, um, they, you know, have a direct contact with our Murdis Taylor professionals. Um, they usually immediately reach out to that scholar and family um, and set up, you know, it, it, whether it just be a therapy session or just a session where they just need someone to talk to during that time. In addition, you know, scholars have, you know, the cell phone numbers of all of my administrative team. My number is given out to every family. So, you know, we often get, you know, phone calls, text messages, emails. Um, you know, scholars reach out to us on our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter. So scholars, you know, have direct access to myself and to members of my administrative team. Um, many of our teachers also give out their personal numbers. So when scholars are feeling, you know, you know, they, you know, either they're having anxiety or just having, you know, they might be feeling depressed or just need someone to speak to, they are able to reach out directly to the teacher, their administrative team, and then, you know, when a Appropriate, our teachers and administrative team do connect scholars and families with Murdis Taylor. Um, so, I mean, that really has been a great support piece. And for us, you know, we start our day each day with class meetings. 
So, you know, one thing that we do here at Way Park is our kindergarten through fifth grade scholars um, use a, a social emotional learning program called PEPS, and our sixth through eighth grade scholars use a program called Second Step. So, it really teaches students how to express their feelings. Um, you know, when they're going through something, how do they react and deal with the situation? So we really take, you know, really take time each day to start the day with class meetings. So we go through that, you know, go through the curriculum for that program. And then teachers really, teachers really just take the time just to check in and see how students are, are doing, how they're feeling. You know, are they, you know, are they feeling overwhelmed? Because this is a new learning space, not just for students and families, but for our educators, too. And, you know, our teachers did not go to school to teach virtually. So this has definitely been a steep learning curve for all you know entities involved. So we really, you know, we really have you know provided teachers the, the space where they can start their day with these class meetings. And then throughout the day, if things pop up or you know challenges arise, you know, in their class, teachers here have the autonomy to go you know back into a class meeting. Um, so you know we've really you know like I said taking a thoughtful approach um, to really look at the, you know, the well-being of our scholars and our families. I noticed that you call them scholars. I, I love that. I love that. that what, how did you come up with that particular um, um, description of the students? I did well, you know, here, you know, here in CMSD, you know, we do refer to our students as scholars. Um, mm -hmm. We do um, you know, push our our scholars to you know live up to that name. So that you know that that definitely is something you know throughout the city, um, and definitely here at Wade Park. Um, you know, really how we really how we refer to our to our students as scholars. Love that. I know that. Um, and you mentioned that the educators that you have that they're they're not trained to uh, to teach this way. They're, they're not. That's not what they. Uh, what they've been that what they've been taught that's not the process that we've been doing it for so many years Correct. But this does this does give them an opportunity to do things differently so what support do you have to motivate them how are, how do they get motivated other than seeing your scholars excel well i mean we're really thankful that our ceo eric gordon you know really gave you know all schools about a month of professional development prior to the start of the virtual school year so we're really thankful for that um, every wednesday uh, we do have professional development time with our staff so we've really taken um, a thoughtful look to really teach them you know how do you engage scholars how do you you know do this virtual platform you know you know here at way park we use zoom for all of our classes so you know how do you even navigate zoom with you know 25 you know scholars or so logged in at the same time so we've really you know taken a thoughtful approach to really show our teachers and you know provide the tools to help them navigate the platform and then also provide some support with you know, how do they engage their scholars? Are things perfect? No, but I know we've made tremendous improvement from when we transitioned last March to this virtual space. Mm -hmm. um, and then like, for instance, we just did a temperature check, um, temperature mid-year check with our staff about about three weeks ago, just to kind of see how they were doing, you know, what, some, what are some additional supports that they would like to see uh, we definitely, you know, our Wednesday sessions with our with our with our staff, uh, we really want it to be something that's targeted to meet their needs. So, you know, some weeks we have, you know, different groups, you know, focusing on different areas based on what they've told us they need support in. So it's really an ongoing um, professional series that's targeted to our staff and I get you know as I mentioned like with the temperature check we recently did that with them which we do often just to kind of see how they're doing um, and then you know we when, you know when appropriate like for instance we are uh, right now working on some Valentine uh, Valentine uh, bags of surprises for our staff that we're mailing out actually today so we do look for different ways just to keep them motivated engaged encouraged uh, we also have like some staff uh, staff awards that's also being mailed out to surprise them um, today also. So we just look for different ways, really just to thank them for their service, you know, look for ways to support them and, you know, 
and really the best we can during the space because like as i mentioned you know we're all we're all in the learning space we're all trying to see how we can make this better um not just for our students and our families but for our teachers so to make sure that they feel supported and how how has it changed your job how does how is that how has the pandemic made your job the challenges for your job even more of an opportunity so, Great, great, great question. Um, extremely long hours, long days. Um, really just trying to make sure that, you know, all the different processes that we have in place to keep our scholars engaged, our you know, our scholars and our families engaged, our teachers supported. Um, and then, you know, as I mentioned, some of like our enrichment classes that we have. So some days, you know, we have classes that run till 6, 7 p.m. So really, you know, it's, 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 it's one of those where we're doing the best that we can to keep our scholars in, engage as, as best as possible, um, but it but it also comes with the toll of you know extremely longer days. Just really trying to provide a, a, a menu of you know supports and enrichments for students. So um, it's it's definitely changed in terms of you know me being able to just walk down the hall and pop into a classroom, um, you know, to do some you know inform, informal visits. Uh, with us having just you know a a lot of new students have joined our community this year. Um, it's it's been totally different in terms of really just you know building that bond and connections with new students virtually. Um, so you know, for instance, to kick off the month of February, which is like our big literacy emphasis month, you know, we had a big school wide assembly with you know five hundred. 500 kids um, on Zoom at the same time, you know, so we, we do that from time to time just to really build that community because when we're in school, we start our week every week on Monday with a school wide assembly. Um, okay. So, you know, for us now with it being on Zoom, we have really tried to continue a lot of the different um you know programs and activities that we would have done if they were in school so like another example i can give you every month when they're in school we do a monthly birthday celebration so it's always the first thursday of the month kids get certificates and cupcakes to celebrate their birthdays so with us being virtual we're like well you know how are we going to mail a cupcake to their house and then you know with covid restrictions so we each scholar each um for their birthday they do get like a personalized card for me you know just wishing them a happy birthday and that kind of thing so we really you know look to you know continue a lot of our you know different you know things that we do to celebrate kids in the building um in this virtual space that we weren't doing before. So, you know, just a lot of different logistics, different things go into play just to make a lot of those different things happen. Mm -hmm. um, and before I really did not have to think of. So it, it has pushed me, you know, as an instructional leader here in the building. Um, but I mean, it's one that, you know, it's one of those, none of us asked for, you know, asked for this pandemic. So, you know, we're really just doing the best that we can um, to support you know, our scholars. I know that um, a lot of families have had, um, it's just been an uphill struggle for a lot of families dealing with this. And then how do, how do families, how can families assist or how can the community assist you, your, your teachers, your, your scholars? Um, how can we assist you in, in getting students where they need to be until you're back into the post-pandemic classroom setting? So that's, a, that's another great question. We've really pushed to provide families with as much resources and knowledge that they need to help their child during this space. So for instance, like every Sunday between 7 and 8.30, parents get a call from me with updates for the week, things that they should be working on with their child. They also get a weekly email that comes every Sunday evening with updates for the week and looking ahead for the month. So we've we've done that to really one you know we're not gonna we're not gonna blow up your phone all week you're gonna get one call from Winnie Park every Sunday we really try to be consistent with that mm -hmm. and then we also like I said with the email it has even more information on you know this is our academic focus these are things you should be working on and then like one takeaway we got from some of our families was well. You know, I'm a grandparent. I've never used an iPad before. I've never used a laptop before. I don't know what this Zoom thing is. You know, how do I help my child get online? So um, we do have our 
technology coach, Mr. Kern, that offers these technology workshops for families. Um, so he does one-on-one -on -one sessions throughout the week. I mean, parents, you know, reach out to him often. And then we do these technology workshops, which parents are able to log in, ask him questions. I mean, he walks them through all of the different programs the scholars are using. You know, for instance, you know, how do I know if my child has outstanding assignments? You know, where's the grade book? Um, you know, you know, how do I upload this assignment now? Because some assignments students have to like take a picture of the assignment and upload the picture to get credit, which, you know, for many that are even tech savvy, you know, that may not, you know, they may not know how to do that versus you have not having a grandparent that has never used an iPad before and you're asking them to do all these different things. So we do, you know, host like we actually have one this week, actually. Um, we have one this Thursday night. Um, we're actually getting ready to host another one, which, which once again, he's going to walk them through just how do they log in? How do they check the, you know, how do they check the assignments? And then, you know, just with the academics, you know, how do you access like your reading and math book, which now the students don't have a physical book. The book right. is an ebook. So, you know, how do you access your ebook for the, you know, for reading and math? So, those are some of the things we've done to really keep our parents and you know parents involved and engaged in the process and how we've worked to support our families. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, what we've said to our friends and supporters who are like we, those are our community partners, what we call them, friends and supporters. To our friends and supporters group, we've just said to them, you know, here are some things that you can do to support us. So some of those things, some of those things initially were we don't have enough laptops. Um, can you get us laptops? They immediately rushed and we, you know, we were able to get laptops to many of our scholars, you know, in that March, April, May period before the district's purchase had come through. Um, some of the things that we're asking now are, oh, well, you know, twice a month, we recognize students for writing excellence. Um, or we have like a math athletes award where we um, recognize our math with students. Um, so we've wor we've worked with some of our partners to provide movie tickets um, or, you know, gift cards to Chipotle. And really some of those things, you know, might seem silly, but, for, you know, a scholar getting a $10 Chipotle card, you know, you would have thought that was $100. So, you know, some of the things that we've really asked our, you know, friends and supporters to do have been, have been in the space of really just helping us celebrate our scholars. Uh, we're working right now with another one of your recipients of this award, um, Dr. Yvonne Pointer. She's working to recognize some of our grandparents that have gone above and beyond during this period. So we've recently just identified some grandparents that she's going to be recognizing, um, I think, this month and then going into next month. Um, so that's been another thing, that, another focus for us, really looking to, you know, praise and celebrate our families because we know right now this is not the easiest thing for any of us to do um so you know a family getting a letter and a certificate and um you know or we i know we dropped off recently a, a bouquet of flowers to one of our grandparents had been going above and beyond i mean those are just small things but to the families that you know we've been able to surprise with that i mean it means everything to them so that's i mean those those are just some of the things that we've done um recently um, throughout this virtual space, um, really just to keep everyone just engaged in the process. That's wonderful. How do, another question that's come how do you, um, how do you deal with families who might be um, struggling with, with homelessness? I mean, how do you, how would you get them involved in this process? How do you keep them involved? So we've had some families that have, you know, just, you know, no fault of their own, either mom, dad, grandma, grandparent, auntie, you know, they've lost jobs. So, you know, we've worked with, you know, community partners. So like one of our community partners is New Life at Calvary Church. So they've worked with us. Mount Zion is another one church has worked with us to provide um, you know, food and, you know, Ms. Honeybell Bay, I know she spoke about her Wednesday, you know, food pickup. So we have families that we've connected with Honey. Um, some Honey staff has delivered food to families. So we do have some families right now that do not have a car, do not have transportation. So that's been another another um, logistical thing that we've worked through with our team, with our family support specialists and with some of our external partners to provide, for instance, like food for that family 
you know, while they're going through hard times. We've also worked with like our Project Act office um, to provide gift cards to that family so that they are, you know, able to, you know, pro- you know, ha- you know, buy clothes and that, you know, those, those sort of, you know, basic necessities that they need. Um, you know, another partner that we have, you know, connects families with jobs. So we really, you know, worked, you know, what once, you know, once we hear about a need, you know, our team immediately gets to work to see, you know, what's what specific items or what specific resources do you need? And sometimes it's not always money. Sometimes it's just, you know, um, you know, I have I have food, I, you know, I have a place over my head right now, but I need, you know, A, B and C. So we really work with each family individually to see what their need is. You know, we always keep it confidential um, and, you know, families know that they can reach out to us, um, you know, for, you know, any anything, really anything that they need. And we really, you know, do our very best to meet that need of the family. You know, each month we have a monthly pickup day where families come to pick up, re- um, come to pick up resources and supplies and materials um, so for their child for that for that next month. So our families definitely, you know, when, when they come for that, like we just had one two weeks ago, um, you know, we had anywhere from clothes to food to school supplies um, to reading books that they needed. You know, one of our um, TV news station partners uh, raised money and they bought scholastic books for every student. So we really use these monthly pickups to provide a variety of resources. But then, like as I mentioned, you know, when a family has a specific need, we really just work with them individually and then pull in external, you know, external partners to see how we can meet those needs of that family. That's great. Um, it, it seems as though you guys have this opportunity has given you guys um, this pandemic has given you guys an opportunity to excel in ways that I could not have even imagined. Um, as you said, my, as I told you, my daughter is, is an adult, so I can imagine being in a pandemic with three uh, three children that are in, in um, elementary and middle school and having to go through all these things. Um, so I, I, I commend you. It sounds as though you guys have everything in order and have everything operable uh, and optimum for every family that you need. Um, I truly think that you guys are doing a wonderful job, in it, and I'm so happy to have finally got to speak with you. I've heard so so much about your school and so much about you and, and the great work that you guys are doing over there at Wayne Park School. So I, I truly commend you all. And thank you, I mean, really thank you for that. I mean, here, you know, my my entire team from, you know, our secretary team, which is amazing, to our teachers, to our support staff, you know, to my three administrators that we have here in the building. I mean, they, they have worked extremely long hours on weekends to really make this work for our family so you know i continue to sing their praises give them kudos and just thank them for everything that they do um because it definitely is a team effort you know to make all this work for, you know for our almost 600 scholars that we have here at wade park um so i definitely do just definitely do want to recognize them you know because you know for me um, I could not do this alone, and I, you know, truly appreciate, you know, everything they continue to do. Even like our parent association, you know, Ms. Irvin leads our SBO, you know, parent group. Um, I mean, they've worked, you know, worked to empower parents, to, you know, even bring in additional resources. So, I mean, even, you know, I definitely don't want to leave our, you know, our, our SBO group out because they, that's another, you know, partner that we have here in the school where, you know, they're working with parents side by side to make sure that parents, you know, are helping their child be successful. So um, definitely it, it's been um, an interesting experience, I will say, um, during this <laughs> pandemic. Um, but we're definitely working as hard as we can to not, you know, make sure that all of our scholars experience success in some way during the school year. Because, you know, as you know, many have said, you know, this is maybe a once in a lifetime pandemic that we're all going through right now. And we really want to be able to say that, you know, we did everything in our power to help our scholars during this process. So definitely. That's wonderful. Yeah, I have an 83 year old mother who I can't imagine her being a grandparent trying to, to teach her grandchild how to open up Zoom. She just learned how to use uh, her Echo Show at this point. 
<laughs> but she's got she's got gotten acclimated to it. At least. Yeah. She can order food now. <laughs> she can order delivery. So I can imagine that, that challenge with uh, with your families as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Shelly, do you have any other questions? Okay. Uh, yes, I do have one question, Dr. Buddy. Uh, with the vaccinations, and I know that uh, many of the uh, teachers and administrators have been uh, beginning that process, how will you reacclimate now that you have done this virtual, um, and what are you finding as it relates to families that are comfortable with sending the scholars back into a classroom setting when we are still in the midst of a pandemic, even though we are uh, getting vaccinations? So many of our families have reached out to us. Um, I know a lot of it is the comfort level of them knowing that we would not have their scholar in a situation where they're unsafe or even our teachers in a situation where they're unsafe. So many of our families have told us that, you know, once the district does, you know, give them the option to continue virtual or to come back in a hybrid or whatever that capacity is, they do plan to send their scholars back. So we do, you know, we are actively planning um, to receive most or a good percentage of our scholars back in this building once the district um, is ready to safely reopen. Uh, we do plan to continue, you know, a lot of our virtual enrichment options that we have right now. So we have anywhere, you know, we have a cooking class, puppets with Miss Honey, you know, we have an art enrichment class. Um, the Cleveland Orchestra provides, you know, private lessons for scholars. So, you know, they're working with our band and our orchestra. You know, we have the student ambassador program, we have a STEM program. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. So we do con we do plan to continue, you know, offering you know this this menu of um, enrichment options for scholars when they come back, which we think have definitely helped um, provide some normalcy for our scholars and really has you know kept them engaged in school um, because you know this has not been an easy process. Um, but you know. Our, as I mentioned, our, our families do trust us and they know we have, you know, their child's well-being at heart. So, you know, many have told us um, that they do plan to send them back. So we, you know, we're actively planning for that. We're ready to receive them, you know, once the time is appropriate, you know, over, you know, over the next few weeks or so. Okay, that sounds good. Now, the only other question I had, you've talked about uh, making available services for the scholars, the things that you're doing for the um, educators and the staff to make them feel appreciated. So what happens to Dr. Buddy? Who's taking care of Dr. Buddy and making sure that he's okay during all of this? Because as you said, you've got even longer hours. Um, it, and I think that many of us have found that is the case in this virtual environment where our days um, have really become longer. We are accessible to so many things that it's easy for you to end up on Zoom, WebEx, or uh, meetings or what have you for hours on end, but then you still have the actual production of work that you have to do. So who takes care of Dr. Buddy? How, how, how do you get some self-care in this time? Shelly, that's a great question. Um, definitely, I will not say that I have mastered the balance yet. Um, you know, definitely working from home for the most part. Um, you know, you know, you know, ten. You know, a, a normal eight-hour day turns into a fourteen-hour day. You know, with you know, with you know, with a snap of a finger. So for me, self-care is something I'm actively working on. I know this summer, you know, we, we had a bike run with um, the Cleveland police. Um, so, you know, it forced me to have to get a bike. Um, so, you know, right now with it being cold, I'm obviously not riding, but I've really been looking for different ways to, you know, one, work out, stay fit, you know, have that downtime where I'm not, you know, in front of some days three laptops at the same time, you know, checking out different classes or, you know, or a district meeting. So, um, 
Don't have a real answer for that. That's something I'm working on. So definitely I want you, Shelly, to stay on top of me on that. Because, you know, self-care is crucial, especially when, you know, you're, you know, I'm taking care of and serving so many different families and students. Um, so, you know, something I'm working on, um, but I, you know, I do try to a couple times a week, you know, take some time to work out and, you know, just take some time to walk and, um, de-stress from everything that's going on. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that. And I understand um, I already had a bike. Biking is one of my passions and I have so missed it since uh, about October when it started getting cold. And just recently I've started adding some workouts during um, the mornings uh, so that I can be fit again because you you begin to feel the pressure and um, things aren't working quite right anymore when you're in this environment. But I thank you so much for uh, taking the time out to talk to us, to share with us some of the wonderful things that you've been doing at Wade Park. Um, I became familiar with you about a year or so ago and was just Im uh, immensely impressed by the work that um, you put into uh, the Young Scholars. And I just really wish that everyone had the same passion that you do about ensuring that our children uh, get the educations that they need. Now, Tony, I'm not sure if Lisa's in the office, but I just sent her an email uh, because I was remiss in asking them to give you Dr. Buddy's uh, plaque so that we could do a virtual presentation. Uh, has Lisa popped in on you since uh, we've been on? She has not. The director has though. Okay. Uh, did he give you the plaque? He did not. Um, okay. Um, let me grab it. Okay, please do, because I want to make sure that we at least virtually uh, present you with your plaque, Dr. Buddy, and then we will make sure that we get it to you uh, in person. Uh, it's been an adjustment for us to do um, Black History Month on Virtually, just as you know, the adjustments that it has been to teach scholars. So, um, but again, thank you for all that you do. It's a pleasure. I've actually had the opportunity to see some of those cooking classes. Um, and those are just amazing uh, to see the kids come up with their uh, renditions of the various uh, recipes. So it's been good. I don't know if you got a chance to see the cooking competition we did uh, with the gingerbread, um, the gingerbread cooking competition, but that was intense. Those kids <laughs> <out for winter. laughs> No, I didn't see it, but um, I, I did hear about it. <laughs> I do have it. All righty. So, Tony, if you could just read what it's what the inscription is. Sure, it says from the city of Cleveland, 2021 Black History Month Committee. Strengthening Black families through the quest for equity and equality, we'd like to honor Dr. Lee Buddy for your continued leadership and tenacity, February 2021. Thank you. Congratulations. So, Thank you. So we much. will present that to you in the very near future. We will um, t reach out and uh, make sure that we can coordinate that for you. Okay. Um, so at this time, I'm going to offer up um, our closing remarks. I want to thank you, Tony, for a great conversation, and thank you, Dr. Buddy, for the work you do for our children. I would also like to thank our audience for tuning in as we seek to highlight, inspire, and ignite conversation about the best part of Cleveland, our people. I invite you to join us on Tuesday, February 16th, for two more installments in our Black History Month programming. First, we will have a conversation with Mr. Al Grimes, the executive director of the Fatherhood Initiative, because we all know how important fathers are in achieving our goal of strengthening the black family. That conversation is at noon on Tuesday. At 2 p.m. on Tuesday, executive director Stevenson will moderate a panel discussion with local ministers on their role in strengthening, strengthening the black family. To see a full list of our activities throughout the month, you can visit www.clevelandohio.gov 
backslash Black History Month. Thank you again, and we'll see you all next week. Thanks again, Dr. Buddy Thank and you, Tony. Thank you.